So the next one we'll look into is called work stealing pool. And work stealing means literally is that one worker can steal the activities or the tasks from others. So what exactly happens is that um, in work stealing pool, so the number of threads or the number of worker threads is decided by the platform and uh, mostly it is equal to the number of threads of your CPU. So if you have a CPU with 8 hyper threaded cores, then uh, you will have 8 worker workers available when you create an instance of work stealing pool will not have the options to specify the number of worker workers you need it, it will just create automatically for you and uh, work stealing pool is comparatively newer concepts because uh, this was introduced in JDK but it's very powerful and very efficient in terms of managing your tasks and activities in work stealing pool what happens is that each worker maintains its own queue own activity so let's say you submit 20 activities and there are four cores that means each core has five activities to complete but for some reason worker one takes lot more time to complete the activities because maybe it is talking to the database and other things wherein the other workers are able to finish their work faster so what will happen is that those worker will come and pick up the activities from worker one's queue so the work is balanced so that's why it is called work stealing pool. And again, you know, you submit your activities using the submit method. Then uh, I showed you how the distribution of the work takes place. And that's why it is pretty efficient um, in terms of the CPU utilizations. And uh, it is very good for large number of short lived tasks. It is not recommended for very long lived tasks. For long lived tasks, you can definitely go with fixed thread pool. And uh, you know, uh, like other executors, you can pretty much submit uh, threads, runnable or callable interfaces to work stealing pool. So let's create an example for work stealing pool. So I'll call this as work stealing pool ex. What I'll do is uh, I'll you know have a private variable as task id and uh, just to uniquely identify my tasks. So I'll say private int task id and i'll create a constructor also to assign the task id and uh, i'll create a method something like action again you know i'll print the same stuff that i've been doing in other examples so i'll create a public void action and i'll print out uh, the task name or the task id inside what thread it is getting executed and then I'll make the thread sleep for some time, uh, around one second. And then uh, I'll say, you know, particular task is completed. So let's do that. So I say task uh, with the ID started in uh, the thread. And I'll say string dot formatted. And then I'll pass task ID and current thread name. And I'll say thread dot sleep around 1000. So the thread sleeps for one second. I'll just say simulate some real world behavior. And uh, now again, I'll say after one second, my task completed. I'll specify the task and the thread. And then in the formatted, I'll say task ID comma thread dot current thread dot get name. And uh, let's test this out inside my public static void main. So I need to create the commenting that are out. First step I need to do is create a new work stealing pool with default number of threads. And uh, the default number of threads would be the number of threads available in my platform. So that's equal to the CPU core. If it is Intel, then is equal to the number of hyper threads available. So here executor service executor equal to executors dot new work stealing pool and uh, now i need to submit some tasks i'll say executor dot submit and then i'll just create some task using the new work stealing pool so because this is not a thread so i need to convert this to a thread so i need to also specify the method 
action we just uh, do this for a couple of more tasks so i'll just submit three tasks here so task one two and uh, task three and uh, finally i i also need to do executor dot shutdown so let me do that so uh, one surprising behavior that you see is that when i run and try to see the output nothing has come out and that's because um, you know when i submitted the task it immediately got shut down so what i will do is i'll just make the executor wait for some time so i'll say executor dot await so wait so wait for the activities to start so I'll say executor dot await and uh, uh, you know await termination and I'll say 10 seconds so I'll specify the units and this throws uh, some exceptions so um, I'll just add that to the uh, method signature this throws interrupted exception so let's run this and see what happens so now you see that you know my task started and then it waited for things to get completed and then it got completed okay so we have not talked about folk join pool so we'll talk about it in the later video but for now let's understand that i have more workers available than the assigned task that's why you know enough workers were assigned to execute my task so in the next example what i'll do is i'll create around 50 tasks and uh, in this current system i have around 12 threads so we'll see how 12 workers can uh, take care of 50 tasks that is submitted so that's all for now so to understand the behavior i'll just modify the code a bit so what i'll do is uh, i'll put this inside a for loop and i'll create around like 50 activities okay and uh, i'll say like five zero okay So you can see that uh, I have, you know, 12 workers available. So you can see that the, the activities or the task was distributed among 12 workers. So first batch was executed by the 12s, then it waited, then it um, completed the next 12, right? And then it completed the next and so on. It went that way because there were 12 workers available okay so i think that is about uh, the work stealing pool i'll see you in the next video thank you for watching this tutorial i will see you in the next video you can put your questions in the comments below